body. Um, man, I got to shave my beard. It looked terrible. Uh, it's been a, a little while since I've, I've done a video for the RS4K. Um, filming this intro the next day, I actually did a bunch of work on it yesterday and uh, just wrapping up my editing. So this is a, a quick little intro, uh, working on the diff mount brackets for the 4K and uh, tinkering with my new plasma table toy. Um, and that actually is the reason I haven't done a video for a couple of weeks because I've been working on that table rather than working on the car. So finally got the table all, all mostly doing what I think it needs to do. Um, so enjoy this video, uh, fabrication, TIG welding, uh, using the plasma table. And there's for all my nerdy friends, uh, some bonus nerdy content at the end. If you, if you're not into it, feel free to stop watching whenever you feel like it. Uh, but a little discussion on, on CAD process of, of, you know, art to part, uh, which means this is going to be a long video. It's, it's going to be about 40 minutes. So about 20 minutes of actual Audi content fabrication and then you know 20 minutes of me just talking uh talking shit about SolidWorks and uh stress analysis and that sort of stuff uh hope you like it so the shop's a, a total disaster area i did clean up a little bit but uh still got a lot more cleanup to do but this is the new to me uh bob a8 plasma table uh i bought this at a machinery auction um for very little money. Uh, did quite a lot of work cleaning it up and getting it working properly and fixing things. Uh, it's running a PowerMax 85 three-phase plasma cutter. Um, you can see here a bunch of my test cuts. I've been having a hell of a time getting it to cut dimensionally accurate. I finally figured that out yesterday, so fingers crossed we can make a good part now. So let's have a go at that. So we're pretty much set up zero point got plasma on at 43 amps uh, i got my program set up ready to run i'm going to use automatic head control uh, let's enable the cut cut is on and let's see if we get a good cut we'll hit we'll go to our g-code here and reset it I think it's going to take 3 minutes 43 seconds to run this. Let's uh, let's hit start. Let's see what we get. So the first plate, I had some settings wrong, didn't fully cut through. I updated some settings, we're trying again. It's all part of the learning curve. Looks better. Better, see if the holes look better. Fished out. Uh, so 
little rough in places, still learning. The uh, backside does have a little more dross than I've been getting. You can see right on that edge there, but it will knock right off. So next up, we'll take this over to the workbench and clean it up. See if it fits on the car, fold it up, and we'll be good to go. Let's go over to the workbench. I should say the plasma isn't going to live where it currently lives long term. Alright. Put part on the bench, and uh, here's one I made earlier. Unfortunately, not to the right scale. That's a whole other story. Um, but this is what we're going to end up with when I clean that up. And then I already cut this out. This is the side bracket, the torque arm bracket. Uh, it's cleaned up and ready to get welded together. So we'll break the TIG out in a little bit and uh, clean that up. some issues here. I'm going to come in and get these with a file, clean up these edges around here a little bit. Now we're going to make the uh, make the holes the right size and make them round. clean up. I'm going to clean this out. Uh, take well both of these once I've made sure everything's right. Now we can go and uh, try it on the car. So I've got it loosely in the car. I'm not going to bolt it in completely yet but now this is this is what I've been working to, front diff mount. And obviously there's a gap here right now. Uh, 
I'm actually going to put in here a piece of quarter inch uh, very hard rubber in between the two but everything bolts up the next step is I'm going to cut this section of floor out and I'm going to let in uh, a piece of quarter inch plate into the floor. I might do it in eighth actually with some captive knot and then I can bolt this you know directly up to the floor here. Yeah now some clean up and some welding and the uh, the torque arm in my light over here the torque arm actually bolts on here and connects to this and then there's a rear mount back here which you've seen before so I'll take this back out get to cleaning and grinding pull the TIG welder out do some TIG welding so clean this stuff up a little bit more I actually took it over and put it in the, uh, the B blast cabinet get off all the dross before I TIG weld it I'm going to TIG weld outside and inside of these bent lines I'm going to assemble this and TIG weld this together so that's what's coming next um, I haven't TIG welded in a long time so let's see how this goes I'm going to need to put new batteries in my welding helmet though it's a little weld prep wipe the desk on should be pretty clean I want to make sure I get any silica off there from the glass cabinet I ran out of battery halfway through doing this so uh, need a little more amperage I want to put like 145 and I'm actually doing a lay wire weld because this is a effectively a gouge surface I'm laying my filler rod in there and then pulsing up my way across gives a decent weld backside is horrible because I'm not using any uh, any gas can't see the back side. inside corners here a little uh, fill in there as well but let that cool for a bit and go on to the uh, fork support get it to assemble nicely
your mother's brother.
So <clears throat> I wanted to show a little bit of the, the process that I use. Uh, back to the, the diff mount on the um, RS4K. There are two diff mounts. There's a front diff mount and there's a side diff mount. The side diff mount is a torque arm. And this is my design for the torque arm. I'm going to plasma cut this out of 8 inch uh, cold rolled steel. Um, and you can see I've designed it. You know, there's a top plate. There's a side plate that wraps all the way around here. And by the way, this is SolidWorks uh, 2020. Uh, and then there's this rear uh, flange. And you can see that the, the top flange and everything kind of jigsaws together. Pretty standard stuff I'm sure you've seen online. Um, now, I think this is going to be strong enough. You know, historically, I kind of go overkill and I would make this in... in uh, quarter plate but now I have access to this plasma cutter CNC plasma cutter uh, I want to do some experimenting and uh, by training I'm an industrial designer mechanical engineer uh, that's my day job uh, product designer so uh, I like to use the the knowledge and the skills that I have uh, so I've designed this thing uh, and before I build it I can virtually test it and uh, what I have here if I switch over to my uh, simulation, uh, and I'm going to do a static simulation, meaning not a cyclic load, but just literally, uh, I picked this. This purple here is my. Okay, so let's back up a minute. So these blue arrows here, all these green arrows, are my fixed constraint faces, um, and you know there's a there's actually a big boss on the transmission here there's one here there's actually another here and it kisses off along the bottom but uh, for now I, I want to show you what this simulation study can show me so let's run the study oh, I don't know what that's all about oh fixed loads okay I'm gonna edit my fixed load because I've got other faces in there. I'm not going to fix that one. Okay, so let's just assume it's just the bosses that are fixed. And I've got my load over here. Let's zoom in. Now let's run the study. Oops. And it's going to say it's got a very large displacement. Uh, and it's going to take a while to figure this out, and that's because I don't have it properly constrained right now. You know, it's really not constrained just on these bolt holes, on these inner faces. You know, I've said that is fixed, it can't move in the study. And that's not actually true. So, let me go back to the model. Actually, what I'm going to do is I have a feature here where I, I've put in a split line and what you can see in this is this is actually the two bosses on the differential have this amount of contact area and there's actually a third boss here that I could put a bolt in if I wanted to uh, I'm not right now and it also you know had this touches off on a boss on the case but I'm gonna leave that as it is right now I'm gonna go back to my static study Okay, so now I'm saying, okay, these these three circles I want to constrain. So let me edit my definition. And I say, okay, this face, this face, and this face are constrained. Those can't move because they're up against the diff. Now let's run the study. It should run a little bit faster because this thing is more accurately constrained. So my load that I've got on the end here is a thousand foot pound is a thousand pounds of force spread across this disc, uh, and this disc is is an additional disc I'll weld on, um, and I, I can show you the analysis that made me add this disc on here. It should be done any second. Okay, so what we're looking at here, this is a strain plot, sorry, a stress plot. Um, and it tells me here the yield strength of this material is uh, 3.5, effectively, von Mises. Um, so this red arrow, this down here says this is, this is the yield point. 
um, where we get plastic deformation. Um, I also have some other plots here. So if I go to the displacement plot, this actually shows you how the part is going to bend and warp. And it looks really bad, right? You know, it's, it's, it's totally bending down here because this back area isn't supported. And actually, if I animate this, let me slow it way down. We can actually see in real time how this thing is going to bend and we can see in this area where it's unsupported at the base it's bending now one thing to bear in mind here if I stop this animation is that this is this is not real this is a, has a deformation scale of 3.37 so it's moving three times as much as it actually will if I go and edit this definition I can tell it to work in true scale which means it will move what we'll see is the actual motion with a thousand pounds load being put on this thing and taken off and you know up at this end here it gets yellow orange which means it's moving about 4.5 millimeters with a thousand pounds of force on there and if we go back to the stress plot we know that the yield strength where we get plastic deformation is, is 3.5. So if I go up to my plot tools and I go to ISO clipping, if I change this ISO number, I bring this black arrow over here down in line with the red arrow. That means anything that is now shaded has a potential to yield, to plastically deform. So that's not good. We don't want that. Plastic deformation is bad. So let's get out of here. There's some things we can do. If we go back to our model, um, you know, I have this bottom area here that's also uh, constrained. It's not bolted down, but it can't move back. So back to the static plot. I change my fixture and I say, okay, this face also cannot move because it's hard against the diff. And then I run my study again. As soon as it's finished up, we get to see some some data. Okay, so so now in our stress plot, if I go back to my ISO clipping and I set this at the yield point, now we can see that the amount of yield is really constrained to these two bottom corners here. You know, it's just a little bit of plastic deformation there. And that's probably okay. Uh, let's look at the displacement again and we're in deformation scale of one so now if we animate this this is what we're actually going to get and you can see you know at, at the if I stop the animation we can see now if I probe it you can see this end here is red which is 9.65 to the minus one. Uh, if I could take a probe, I can say, okay, you know, at this area here, it's moving 6.45 to the minus one. So it's moving 0.6 millimeters with a thousand pound load under there. And the only place it's plastically trying to deform is back at this bottom corner. So now, you know, this makes me feel a whole lot warm and fuzzy, uh, warmer and fuzzier that this thing is gonna be strong enough uh, because this thing isn't going to see a thousand pounds of of torque load on it. That's you know one of the downsides of this analysis. You have to guess what the load is, because I don't have any way of measuring it. But this is just the, the torque reaction on the differential. For example, when I hit the gas coming out of a corner or dump the clutch and from a launch from a dig, um, and there is also a front mount and a rear mount on the diff. So. I think this is pretty safe. Um, the next step in uh, in making this um, this thing into reality is getting. Uh, let me find my window. All right. 
So this this is this bracket, and I'm just going to go back to my my model and get rid of. Uh, going to roll up above this split line because I don't want these showing in the in the other window. So this is the this is the flat parts laid out that I'm going to cut on the plasma cutter, uh, and the front diff mount is actually this, uh, which gets folded up. Uh, these these small cuts here have to allow me to easily bend this eighth inch plate uh, in my in my bender, uh, and then I'll TIG weld those slots shut, and that'll set the set the bend. So you know I'm going to cut this guy. And I'm going to cut these and uh, what I do is I take this into Fusion 360 and here's the here's the uh, front diff mount bracket and you know I have two CNC operations here for the plasma this is the first one that's going to cut these bend slots and the second one cuts the whole thing out but uh, if I want to go and simulate this you know this is this is what the plasma cutter table is going to do. It's going to cut the slots and it's going to do all the slots then it's going to do all the holes. I'll speed it up. Now it does the holes, now it does my logo, cuts out the triangles and then cuts the perimeter. So uh, from here I output my g-code and I go into the TorchMate software and here is the Actually, this is the actual software that I use to run the table, and here's, this is a G-code for that plate. Uh, and if I start this, it's going to say OK, that's because we're not connected, but you can see the little, the little dot. This is the actual G-code running for the plasma cutter. So, with all this said, let's go out and uh, make a part on the plasma cutter, clean it up, bend it up, weld it, put it on the car.